Hey everybody, Zach here at eTrailer.com. Today we're taking a look at the Malone Megasport two-tier with Saddle Up Pro kayak carriers. This is going to be a really nice heavy-duty way to get our boats to the water. So you can see I have two recreational kayaks here today. And then what's cool is I have this second tier up top. So I can add another kayak carrier up here if I'd like or some pads and I can carry canoes, stand-up paddle boards, additional kayaks. And what's another nice feature is this crossbar right here. I can move this back and forth along this top rail here. So we can also add bike racks, cargo baskets, cargo boxes, a lot of different accessories to fit our needs whenever we're going out taking our kayaks to the water. Now, one of the things that separates the Mega Sport from the Micro Sport trailers that Malone offers is how heavy duty this one is. This one has been beefed up. It's gonna give us that thousand pounds of load capacity so we can get some of those fishing kayaks on here and get a couple of those loaded up and what I like is you know just everything throughout this has a little bit more beef to the frame so the tires are bigger those leaf springs everything about it is going to allow us to carry heavier stuff but give us that nice feel we're looking for when it comes to pulling this trailer with kayaks on the back so when it comes to carrying your kayaks there's a lot of different ways so why would you want this big heavy trailer well for me you can carry more things so i can either free up space on top of my roof for other kayaks or gear or bikes whatever i'm doing on my trip or i don't have to load them up there at all so grand cherokee we're using today not real tall but it's still kind of a struggle to get some of those boats up there especially fishing or some of those touring kayaks things that are just a little bit heavier these aren't too bad but what i like about this is I can get a lot of gear back here. So we get the storage container and the storage box down here. I can get two kayaks loaded up like this, I get the additional things there. And I don't have to worry about having a bunch of stuff on my roof and having you know the potential of damaging my vehicle, getting things loaded up. That's, that's going to happen at some point. You're gonna you know, be tired after being out on the water, lift your kayak up in place, and you're gonna hit your car at some point. It happens to all of us. This is a good way to just get heavier stuff, not have things on your vehicle, and just get more stuff. So for me, I think the trailers are a really cool way to go, especially if you're going on some long trips and you're taking a bunch of friends with you. You all wanna pile into one car. So you can get more stuff this way versus just doing the roof setup. So when it comes to hauling a trailer, a lot of us don't have any experience. We don't have this proper setup and, you know, for me, I've hauled a few trailers, not a lot, but I took this one around. I drove several miles on some you know, regular highways, and I felt that it was pretty easy to pull around. Now, backing up was a little challenging for me, but that's something that just gets a little bit easier the more you practice. So the one thing when I was pulling this down the road is I noticed it was kind of noisy, and that's just because the weight of the trailer. So trailers are gonna bounce around a lot, and for me, this one didn't give me a lot of tongue weight, which that means it's the amount of weight pressing down on the ball mount that I have here. So I did get some movement there bouncing around. And that's just because this ball mount that we're using today just has a lot of different pivot points to adjust to different heights. So one thing I do like about this as a trailer, it comes with everything we need to get it hooked up as a trailer. Now you will need a hitch and a two inch ball to get this connected to your vehicle. But as for the trailer, it comes with a coupler, it comes with a jack, it comes with a spare tire, it comes with all of the parts to build the trailer. And when it comes to building the trailer, it would definitely take you some time, but you're only doing it once, and then you get a really cool setup that you can use for a long time. And another thing that's really nice about the trailer is it comes with all of the proper paperwork so we can get this licensed legally because it is a trailer, you do need to have it licensed. So having all of that stuff in one kit is a really nice setup. Another thing that I like that everything's included are the trailer lights. So trailer lights are really easy to get hooked up. We just run our wires. We don't have any weird connections to make. They're really simple plug and play bullet connectors that just plug into one another. We don't have to trim anything and make weird connector connections with butt connectors. And it's gonna give us all of our proper lights. So we're gonna get running lights, brake lights, left and right turn signal. And I like that they're LEDs, so it's just a really nice setup that's easy to get in place. When it comes to connecting to our vehicle, so you definitely need a hitch and you need a ball mount that has that two inch ball on it. So it comes with the coupler, 
comes with the jack, it comes with our safety chains. Um, another thing you need to make sure is that you have proper trailer wiring. So this is going to be a four flat or four pole connector and that gives us all of our trailer lights. And when it comes to hauling this, most vehicles can haul this trailer. So it has a capacity of a thousand pounds. Trailer only weighs about 325 pounds. So not every vehicle out there can pull this trailer, but a majority of them can. So being able to hook this up to just about any vehicle out there is another really nice way that we can get a lot of extra gear on the road with us. So with this setup we have today, we have the Saddle Up Pro Kayak Carriers, and those have a load capacity of 75 pounds each. So our kayaks today, just these recreational ones, definitely fall below that. But if you've got some of those kayaks that get up above that, you know, especially the fishing kayaks, the Mega Wing setup, which is the same trailer, just with the Mega Wing kayak carrier, that has a load capacity of 150 pounds. So that's maybe something to consider if your boats get up over that weight. Um, as for the overall length, I just have a nine and a half foot and 11, 11 foot kayak in place right now. So you can see, I didn't bring them back that far, but look how much space I have between the kayaks and my vehicle. So even if you've got some really long touring kayaks, you're still gonna have a good amount of space between your kayaks and your vehicle. I already removed my other kayak and I'm gonna take this one off so we could take a closer look at those storage boxes. But this is also a good point to show how easy this is to unload this. So, you know, compared to a roof or even this second tier, when it's at this kind of, you know, hip level, it's really easy to slide those off. And since those pivot for us, it's really easy to slide this off. Look how easy that is to get that unloaded. I don't have to reach above my head and carry this heavy kayak and try to not scratch my vehicle and then I can just carry my boat to the water. Real quick, we'll take a closer look at the Saddle Up Pro. This is one of my favorite style kayak carriers. I, I prefer the saddle style when it comes to loading up kayaks. Now, J style work better for some. You know, you can get more boats wherever you're loading them up that way, but I just like the way that this installs. I like the way it pivots. I like the grip that it has in place. I feel like I don't need to struggle as much to get it lifted up. Now, in this setup on the trailer, it's not as big of a deal, but let's say you don't need to take your trailer every time you're taking your boats to the water. Maybe it's just you and you have a roof rack on your vehicle. This is gonna work with round, square, most aero, most factory bars. So it's a really versatile piece. We can take it off here real easily and put it on the roof and just go back and forth depending on our needs. Now, what separates this trailer from all the other ones that we've seen out there is the storage solutions. We have the dry box that's gonna give us five and a half cubic feet of storage space and this wire basket it's more like a cage that's going to give us eight cubic feet so i think that that's a really nice addition adding these in and what i like about the dry box it has these little cleats that hold it in place so we'll get those undone and then this slides out so it's easier to access that stuff now it has these carabiners that keep the latches down I probably would only do something like this, but you could remove the other one to completely take the lid off. And you can see we have a few things in here. I have some towels, you know, I have some mats, some strap bags, book bag, some pads if I'm gonna take something like a stand-up paddleboard on that top. So it's not a ton of space, but we do get a good amount. Now this is a drive box. It has a seal, which is probably hard to see here, all the way around this lid. This isn't gonna be completely waterproof. It, you can't submerge this. So if you try to you know, put your trailer in the water, it's going to allow some water in, but just rain and going down the road, I think it's gonna do a good job. If you put stuff in there or water does get in there, it does have a drain plug on it, which is really nice addition. Um, but I think that this is really nice piece to add on there to keep some stuff dry that we're worried about. Now, if it's really valuable electronic type stuff, I wouldn't put it back there. I'd keep it in the car. But being able to slide this back and forth is really nice. Uh, one thing that we don't like about it is, well, one, we can't get this all the way over because this just falls down in place on the opposite side. So we have to go over there and pull it out, which is just a minor inconvenience, but we do have to go back and forth to get that. And then trying to get this loaded and unloaded with kayaks on, it's really difficult. Now, for me, the dry box is a really nice touch, but this is what I think I would use the most is this cage. So 
This is going to allow some of our wet stuff to dry out going down the road. So, you know, we have some different bags or paddles in there. You can put your PFDs in there if you want, whatever you want. I mean, anything's gonna fit in there. You know, you do have to worry about, you know, road grime and just different stuff getting slopped up on it going down the road. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Now it's held in place with this strap and we'll get that taken out of the way, set that aside. And this lid comes all the way off. So you see we get full access there. Like the dry box, kayaks need to be removed for this to work, but you can see we've got a good amount of space in there. Get our paddles out of the way. We've got a couple full-size duffel bags in there. Got some other smaller bags. So we're not gonna be able to carry a cooler or anything back here real big and a bunch of heavy stuff, but a lot of smaller, you know, lighter items, this is gonna work out great for. These tires are gonna be really nice. So they have, you know, it's a full-size trailer tire of this size. And what I like about it is it also comes with this fender. Now this fender is nice and it's that same galvanized steel. I wouldn't stand on this personally um, to get stuff loaded up on the top. I don't think that with my weight that it would hold. I mean, it would probably flex a little bit. Um, so just keep that in mind, probably not the best step. But getting to that second tier isn't that high anyway. And then another thing with this trailer is you can just see all the way through this, we have that galvanized steel components. The frame is just really nice, heavy duty, has a really good axle on it, has an 1800 pound axle on there. Now that doesn't mean we get to carry 1800 pounds. The capacity of the trailer is still a thousand pounds, but everything is just really right in line with what we're looking for out of a heavy duty kayak trailer. Now, something we didn't use today, but I like the feature that's been added on here are all these little tie down hooks. We're gonna have one on each side of all of our load bars, top and bottom. So for our kayaks, I didn't run the strap there, but if you have something that's wider, I think it's really gonna come in handy. Um, so it's a really nice touch that they've added on there. When it comes to the overall length of our load bars, the bottom one is gonna be 86 inches from side to side, and the top is gonna be 50 inches. But you're losing some space when it comes to all the mounting hardware. So I'm gonna give you some numbers where I think you actually get usable space for loading this down. So from, I'm gonna go from this right here where things start kind of meeting up, where that bolt is. We're sitting at about 22 and a half inches on the top bar from side to side. And then on the bottom, I'm gonna to go to right here. We're sitting at 41 and three quarters of an inch. So we definitely lose some of that space. Um, but when it comes to how much size is there, we're getting a lot of capacity. And with this top one especially, what I like about it is you can utilize the whole space when it comes to setting stuff on top. And especially if you're doing kind of a wider setup, like on a canoe, you can get a carrier loaded here and here. And even though this is here, we're not missing that space. Where if you use a pad, we're kind of having some, you know, the bracket and the bolts there fighting that pad. So I kind of prefer, you know, something similar to the Saddle Up Pro kayak carrier up top again. Just whatever fits your needs, whatever you're looking to carry up there. But if you're not carrying boats, you're carrying, you know, bike racks, you still have a lot of really good usable space up there. Another nice touch is that they added in the spare tire. So it's gonna match the two that we have in place. One thing I would consider picking up is a lock to keep this secure. And then when it comes to the jack, it is, it's definitely gonna do the job, but for me, I feel like it doesn't match the quality of the trailer. It's still gonna do the job, like I said, but it's just kind of a basic jack. One nice thing is the wheel. That's, you know, when it comes to this trailer, I like how easy it is to maneuver. So we're gonna remove this, take some of the pressure off there. I'll remove my safety chains, get these out of the way, unplug my wiring, get that out of the way, pull up on my latch there, and then this handle is a really nice touch. So we can just get that lifted up and then look how easy this is to maneuver. So, you know, it's a good sized trailer. You're probably not gonna be able to store this in most garages. If you have the space, that's great, but we can easily push this around to kind of get it tucked around to the side of the house, 
If you do have a barn or a garage that's large enough, even better, but it's definitely gonna hold up. What I like about this is, you know, it's a heavy duty trailer, but it's still light enough to kind of maneuver. So if you're not the best at backing up trailers like I am, we could easily get this backed into a garage or tucked around on the side of the house if you don't have the space. So I'm just gonna take this one back inside right now. When it comes to getting ready to head out for your trip, first thing I like to do is load up my basket, my storage box. I've already got all of our gear in there. And then I went ahead and I loaded up this boat over here. And what I like about the Saddle Up Pro is we're getting our boats off of the rails. So, you know, if you go with one of the options where you're just setting them down on the rails, you're really trying to max out how many different kayaks you can get on here. It's an okay way of going about it, but I like having this style kayak carrier. I actually prefer the saddle style versus the J style, especially when we're loading them up low like this. So what's nice is that these pivot and they just give us good rotation. So it makes it a little bit easier to load it up. Now we've kind of slightly mocked this up. We got a good idea of how wide we need to get those, but if you need to make those adjustments, we just loosen up these knobs down here and we just tighten those up and we can just slide these back and forth. So wherever we need to put it, just tighten it down, get it put in place. So we'll test it out and see if this works in this setting right here. You can see how that rotated for me. Made it really easy to get this lined up. So especially if you've got really big fishing kayaks or you've got some that are really long, getting those lifted on top of your vehicle can be can be a challenge for most people. I mean, I'm a pretty tall guy and getting them loaded on any vehicle is still a challenge for me. So I think that this looks pretty good here. Gonna make sure that all my points are good. So I think what we can do now, make sure we're not resting on the actual brace, which we are. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this forward just a little bit see if that helped us out. But I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scoot these in a little bit more. So I'll loosen that up just a little bit, raise up on that, and then we can tighten that down. And if you want, you can take the kayak back off. I just kinda like to have it there because it still gives me a good idea as to where it's at. And then once we get this tightened down all the way, we can start running our strap for this kayak. So what I like to do is I'll take my strap and I'll run it underneath my load bar. And then I'll drape it over and I'll do the same thing. But what I'll do here is I'm gonna run it behind that load support. And if you want, you can utilize these tie down anchors. Since we have this strap system with this specific kayak carrier, I don't feel that it's necessary today. If we had a really wide boat and we got this out a little bit further, but if I was running that strap all the way out here to my anchor, it's still a little bit of space there where we'd have a little bit of slack. So then when I have it ran back underneath that, we can run it through the buckle and get this tightened down. Take out all of our slack here. And I get this actually a little bit further away from our storage system there. All right, then we can just tie off this slack and repeat that same process for our other strap. So I've got everything strapped down properly. All of our gears loaded up. Garage is open. We're gonna pull this out and I'm gonna get the car pulled around. We're gonna take this out on the road and see how it does. So when it comes time to getting it hooked up, you know, that's one of my favorite things about this trailer. It's easy to maneuver. So we'll get it lined up and we can use that jack to get this raised up into place. Make sure we have that coupler open. And remember, it's a two inch ball. So I've got a tri ball here, so you wanna make sure that you have one that's two inches, not an inch and seven eighths or two and five sixteenths. So it's important to get the right ball size on there. And then once we get that on there, we can get that latch down, bring up our jack.
Okay, get that slid up out of the way. Get our safety chains hooked up. And a way that I was taught is to get these crossed over. So I'll take the passenger side and bring it over to my driver's side, and then vice versa over here. And then we can get our four way, our four plug wiring hooked up. Now it's a good idea to test this out. Make sure that we've got proper wiring or that our electrical is working. And you can see here, I've got a little bit of slack. So I could probably pull some more of that through. If I'm gonna be using this vehicle consistently, you know, sometimes that plug in right there is a little bit further down. Sometimes it's, you know, this is too much in my opinion. You could easily get that snagged on something. So that's something we need to address before we take it out on the road. But let's test out and make sure that our wiring is working properly before we get out on the road with this. All right, so now that we've got everything hooked up, we're gonna test out our left turn signal first, then our right turn, our brakes, and our running lights. And once we've confirmed that those are all working and we're safely hooked up, we can start heading down the road. Now, one thing I would recommend when you're getting ready to install this, there's a lot of boxes that come with this, and I would try to find a way to kind of spread it all out, keep things together. That way we don't get hardware mixed up with different components. And if you follow along in the directions, you'll notice like group one. So I'm working on the main kind of frame here, and it's group one. So the bag that comes with this is the hardware that we'll use. So we're gonna start out, and I have this laid upright, so the way that it will sit on the ground. Now you can see I have all these cross members here laid out that are going to run here and then the two on the end are a little bit different. So this one's a little bit more narrow, tapers in, and this one on the back has the Malone logo on it. So we just want to make sure that's how we're doing the front and back. And what we can start doing is we can start piecing this together with the nuts and bolts. And the way that we're going to do this is just hand tight for now. So I'm going to start back here in the corner and just kind of work my way around. So I'm just going to kind of lay all my lay all my hardware out. Let's get this lined up here. I'll we'll just drop in from the top. I'm going to run that nut from underneath. And that way it keeps that nut on the inside of our frame. So it won't be exposed. The end of that bolt won't be there to snag stuff on. Now once you get this one loosely installed, we'll skip these next two and we'll make our way to the next one. Get that loosely installed and just keep working our way all the way around. We'll just follow those directions in regards to the placement of these beams. Now the fourth one from the very back is going to be flipped. So you can see that the channels were all facing the rear of the channel until I got to this one. So we flip this one face the opposite way and then we get back in that same formation there until we get back to this last one and then once we get this one at the very end installed we can just repeat that same process for the other side now once you have all of those in place what you should do is measure from corner to corner to make sure that you're even I've done a pre-test already and I was really close I made a tiny tiny adjustment it's really hard to be really far off with this but what you want to do is just make sure you're as even as possible and then we'll get this tightened down in the corners and then we can flip it around to start tightening down the other side okay and this may be a little bit easier if you have a friend helping you out. John's behind the camera today and he helped me out with the pre-test on this and got us pretty close. So I'm just kind of doing a quick check to make sure we're really close. We are, we are extremely close. So I'm gonna go ahead 
and tighten this down in the corners with a 14 millimeter wrench and a 9 16th socket. We'll get those tightened and we can just flip this over and do the same thing on the bottom side. Then to flip this over, if you want, you can grab a second set of hands. It is doable by yourself, but just be careful because it is relatively heavy. And then it's going to be in the same exact spots where we're running that hardware before. Just drop down those bolts from the top and follow it up with a nut underneath. I went ahead and I ran all the hardware for the bottom side. I did not install it in this part right here. So this is going to be the fourth from the front. Now we will have additional hardware that runs in that hole later on. So we're gonna leave that open and I'm gonna leave everything just hand tight except for those corners again. It's a good idea to go back and recheck that you have those even just side to side or corner to corner um, to make sure we haven't shifted at all. So let's tighten those down fully and then we can move down to our next step. Once we have all of those four corners tightened down, we can grab the tongue of our trailer. So it's gonna be this piece right here. And the way we know that it's the coupler end, it, we're going to have these three holes right here that are all kind of offset that create this triangle. And that will be the driver's side of our trailer. Now we can take one of our wiring harnesses, we're gonna come with two, and we're gonna grab the one that has two four pole connectors. And what I'm going to do is take this end right here and I'm going to feed it in towards the back. And that's where we'll make the connection to the rest of our wiring harness to attach to our tail lights and our side marker light. So I'm gonna feed that all the way through. I'm gonna leave a little bit hanging out of the tongue. That way we can connect to our vehicle and have enough room there. So I'm just going to keep it right about here for now. We'll fish the rest through if we need some more out of the back. But we wanna be careful that we don't smash this during this assembly. And then we can make our way to the back. Now at the back end of that, we'll leave a little bit hanging out so it's easy to make the connection later. But I'm going to take one of the bolts and nuts that we used earlier, that same size, and I'm going to drop it in. And this is going to be our safety, just for now. We'll get that loosely installed. Once we have that done, we can lay that down where the tongue is going to go and we can start adding the rest of our pieces. Now we have to keep in mind that this is upside down right now. So as we're putting these side pieces to the tongue, the logo will be upside down. And you can see right here where this has this slight bend in it. That's going to lay on the frame that we put together earlier. So we'll just kind of loosely lay this in place. And you can see, that's right where that's going to line up with that bolt we left out earlier. So we'll just get that loosely set in place and we can do the same thing for the other side. It's gonna be the same thing over here. Now we can begin putting those bolts down through those cross members. This is where that one was that we didn't have one, so you can see it's just the same hardware. We'll get this loosely installed. And it is a little tight, but... There we go. And then we can do the same thing right here. We just wanna make sure that this is kinda of going towards that tongue that way we're not fighting it once we get these put in place. As we make our way towards the front, we'll kind of pinch these in towards the center. And you'll see that these two oblong holes or oval holes line up with one another. So I'm gonna take a washer with that bolt and run it through. And on the bottom side, I'm going to do a washer with the nut. We'll just help that with those style holes that those pass through. Now we don't have a lot of room for threads there now that we have those two washers in place. But there's 
Definitely enough to get that started and tightened down all the way. And then we'll make our way closer towards the front and we'll do that same thing there. And these are just hand tight because we need to make some adjustments as we get this all put in place. We'll go back later and fully tighten this down. Because you see that gives us a little bit of room there to make any tiny adjustments that are necessary with matching up with our tongue. You can see now that I have that loosely installed, we still have the ability to adjust that to make it match up with the opposite side. But now that we have this loosely installed, let's repeat that same process for the other side. We can then grab these long bolts and these plates. And we're gonna begin attaching our tongue to that frame we just installed. So I'll run those bolts through that frame and then we can bring these together like this and just get those to line up. I'll pass those through. And we want those to pass through the bottom side as well. And this is where having those loosely installed comes in handy. That way we can maneuver this around. So then on the bottom side, we'll follow it up with another plate and then we'll use those same size nuts we've been using so far and get those loosely installed as well. And we have a couple more spots on the tongue that we're going to do this. And I'm actually going to flip it around. So I don't want the threaded part of my bolts facing towards the top. So what I'm going to do is lift up and feed these through the bottom. That way the nuts are on the bottom side. It'll just look a little bit cleaner when a trailer is fully installed. So I'll get one loosely installed and then I can do the opposite side. So then on these back here, since it's going into these cross members, I don't think we need to come from the bottom on those. I think we can easily just feed these through like this. And that may sound a little backwards because this is the bottom of the trailer. So what we're doing is I came from the bottom in this configuration here up front, but in reality, that's the top of the trailer. So we can just feed those through and there's holes that line up on this cross member. And then we'll do that plate on the inside there. get those nuts loosely threaded. Once we have all that loosely installed, we can begin installing the brackets for our springs. Now I'm gonna take my U-shaped bracket and my C-shaped slipper bracket. I'm gonna get those put in place. Now the U-shaped is going towards the front of the trailer and the C-shape is going towards the rear. We're gonna use that hardware we've been using already. I'm gonna go bolt down through the frame and then get a nut on the inside of the frame there. And we're gonna do this for both sides. And it's just gonna be simply getting those put in place. And then we're going to tighten those up all the way once we get these installed. So just tighten those down with that 916 socket, 14 millimeter wrench. We'll get these fully tightened down and I'm gonna do this on both sides. Once we get those hangers in place, we can begin installing the springs on our axle. So we're gonna spin our axle around till we find those centering holes for our springs. Once we get those hangers put in place, we can begin installing our springs to our axle. So we can take the axle, spin it around until we find the centering bolts or centering holes. And then we can take our spring you can see that we have a nut there. We can get those to line up. And then we can take this plate that has five holes in it, got four in the corners and a larger one on the center there. Get that to sit there. We'll take our U-bolts and we'll come from underneath our axle and get those lined up. And we can get those held in place with these lock nuts. 
the same size we've been using so far throughout the installation. And we will get these fully tightened down in a little bit. We just want to get them loosely installed. And we can repeat this same process for the opposite side. Now one thing to keep in mind is we want our springs facing the same direction. So you just want to make sure that they match one another. We don't want them flip-flopped from one side to the other. Once we have those both installed, what you can do is you can run these down until the plate's touching. So you can see how much play is right there. We still want a little bit of play so we can kind of wiggle it around to get it put in place, but we want it to be a little bit more tight. So I'm just gonna make my way back and forth so I get an even pull on those U-bolts and get it so it's just about touching where it's still pretty tight, but I do have a little bit of wiggle room to move it around. So we'll just work our way around with a 916 socket. So now once we kind of have those loosely installed, we can slide this in place and we're going to take this through our slipper brackets down here and just get those kind of lined up as best as possible. Now we can grab our hardware, feed this through right there. Follow it up with a nut on the other side and we can tighten this down. Now I'm using a three quarter inch wrench and socket to get this tightened down. Now we're only doing this part of the spring. So we'll get this tightened down fully and we'll repeat that same process for the other side. All right, once we get this tightened down, we can go back and we can start tightening these down again. And then as we're getting these U-bolts tightened down, what we're looking for is, to, for the tightness, is we essentially want that plate to kind of start bending a little bit. And that's when we know that we've got this plenty tight. But we do want to make sure that we're going back and forth. That way we're getting a nice, even pull on everything. All right, I think we're just about there. I've got the other side done already. Now we can get our tires put in place. I went ahead and put the other side on. We will just get it lined up. You don't have to lift the tires up very far in this position, which is kind of nice. Then we can start putting our nuts on here. And we're just going to get these loosely installed. We'll get these tightened down to the proper torque setting once they're the weight is on the ground and the trailer's flipped up the opposite way. When it comes to flipping the trailer over, it's best to grab a friend. So I've got Aiden here, he's gonna help me gently lay this over. It is pretty heavy and all we did was add more weight to it when we were getting that put in place. So you saw me struggling to get this when it was just the frame. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab in each corner and we're just gonna gently roll it over onto that tire and then slowly let, lower it down to the other side. Thank you, Aiden. Now that we have it down on the ground, we can begin torquing our wheels in place to the proper torque settings located in our instructions. Once we have those tires completely torqued down, we can go back through the entire frame and everything that we left kind of hand tight, we can go back and fully tighten down. So that's pretty much everything in the frame and the tongue. It's gonna to be quite a bit, but let's get all those tightened down and then we can move on to the next step. Now the last thing I like to do is the tongue when it comes to tightening down all of our hardware. And to get this slid out all the way and kind of support it whenever we're tightening it down, I like to elevate it. So I've got a couple jack stands here supporting the frame on the outside. And I've already tightened down all my bolts except for these last two. You can see those are still tight. So we'll just get those tightened down. You know, you can 
Definitely use power tools if you want, but I found that hand tools are a little bit easier, you know, maybe a little bit more time consuming, but getting down in the frame, I think they're just a lot more, they're easier to kind of get in place. All right, I like to go back and forth with these just so it's pulling down evenly. We've got that fully secured down, so now we can move on to our trailer wiring. Before we start running our wiring, we need to have something to attach them to. So we're going to hook up our lights, and the first thing we're going to do is put our bracket for our taillights in place. So we're going to take the taillight brackets, and you can see these square holes are going to line up with one another on the frame here. So we'll take our carriage bolt, and I'm going to feed it through there. We don't need washers for this. Get that to line up. And then I'm just going to put a nut in place on the back to hold this in place so I can get the other one installed. And the nice thing about this trailer is most of our hardware is the same size, so we don't need a ton of different tools. I've been using, for the most part, the same socket and wrench throughout a majority of this installation. So I'm just going to use that 916 that I've been using for the others. When it comes time to installing our tail lights, you want to look for the one that has the light underneath it. This is to illuminate our license plate. So we're going to put this on our driver's side like we have here. And then we also want to install our license plate bracket. So first thing we need to do is we need to take these nuts off the back of our light. And when we get these taken off, we're gonna feed them right through those holes right there. And then that center one, we can run our wires through. So you can see how I put the license plate bracket on. I'm gonna put mine on before I install it to the bracket that's attached to the frame. You can see right there, we can just start putting those nuts on. Now the passenger side is going to install the same way, it just doesn't have the license plate bracket to match this side. Also you don't have that light underneath, but the concept is the same way. So we'll get those loosely installed. Now this is where we're going to use a slightly different socket or wrench. We're going to use a 10 millimeter to tighten this down. And we don't have to really get this extremely tight because we don't want to smash those wires, but we definitely don't want this bouncing around. So we're going to get this where it's just snug. So as we get that snugged up, you can see we're not moving around there. And you can go over top or underneath. I think I'm going to try to go underneath so we're not having these wires up top rubbing. We'll just feed those through the frame where we can easily access those or access those when we run the rest of our trailer wiring. When it comes to installing our side marker lights, we're gonna go just behind the second cross member here and you can see these three holes here. I already installed that side. So what I'm going to do is just get our wires unwrapped there. And I'm gonna take that nut off that post right there and then I'll get those wires spread out. And I'm going to feed them through the bottom holes. So we'll separate those wires, we'll get those pulled through. Try not to drag them along the edge of that hole. And then that center post there is gonna go in the center hole. And then we can just, on the back side of that, put that nut. And then we're going to use that same 10 millimeter socket that we use to tighten down our tail lights. So these don't need to be really tight. You can see just a couple turns there and we're secured. So you would just repeat the same process for the opposite side. And now we can grab the rest of our wiring harness and we can get that prep to plug in to the wiring harness that's coming out of our tongue. So we're just going to plug those four connectors into each other. Get those together. 
And what you can do is you can take some electrical tape around this or a zip tie. That way we don't have any issues with that coming undone. I don't think you would, that is really secure. But just to be a little bit more cautious, then I'm just gonna feed that back into our tongue a little bit. We can pull the rest out later. Now this is where it wise off. This is where one side will go to the driver and one will go to the passenger. And I want my green side will be a green, white, and brown. I want that part running down my passenger side. And I want the yellow, white, and brown running down my driver's side. And then a little bit before we get to that, you'll see we'll have the brown and white wires that will connect to the side marker lights that we just installed. When we're running our wires, we wanna feed them through the frame, the outside frame. So I'm gonna take my furthest back connectors and it's kinda of hard to see, but there's little holes on the ends of these cross members here. And when it comes to making these connections, like I said, they're really easy, but it's very important to make sure that you match those wires to the proper color. So with those side markers, brown to brown and white to white, and then back here on the tail lights, we want the brown to brown, white to white, yellow to yellow on the driver's side and green to green on the passenger side. So we'll just get those connected. And then you can see, after I get this last connection, I've got a lot of extra wire kind of hanging out. So what I'm gonna do is periodically through the frame, I have these holes that aren't being used with this setup. Now, as you can see, I have a lot of slack left in here and we do not want this dangling down like this. I'm gonna pull a little bit out, you know, so we have a little bit more towards the front of the tongue. But even if I just had a little bit it starts hanging down there. The probability of catching a stick or anything when you're going down those back roads carrying your kayaks or just going down a normal road and getting caught in there and ripping your wiring up, then you'd have to rewire your whole trailer. You potentially don't have those lights while you're going down the road. So to solve that, Malone includes these little metal clips to keep our wires attached up here to the frame. Now you can do zip ties as well. Um, we're gonna install these clips though today and they just slide around our frame. And then we can just get our wiring connected in there. So these clips are pretty tight. So I like to use a screwdriver, a flathead to kind of get it pried up. I wanna try not to damage that wiring you can see there you can get this held in place and we can just run those all the way down the frame of our trailer next we'll install our fenders now, obviously i got this one installed already so we're just going to walk through how to get this one put in place so we're going to take our brackets here and we're going to take these slotted screws or bolts and i'm going to feed that through from the outside in Get that put in place, then grab a nut, put that on, and do the same thing for the bottom one. And then we'll repeat that same process for the opposite side. Now we want these facing the same direction. And once we get them Put in place we can begin tightening them down. To tighten them down we'll take a flathead screwdriver and a 916 socket or wrench. We'll get those secured down. When we're attaching this to the frame of our trailer we'll take our bolt with a flat washer and we'll get this lined up. And I'm going on the hole that's closest to the fender there. So I've got that bolt with a washer through it. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to put a washer and then that lock nut, get that loosely installed. And we'll do the same thing for the side closest to the front of our trailer. 
tighten that down. And then we'll grab 916 socket or 14 millimeter socket and wrench. And we'll begin tightening those down. Once we're done installing our fenders, we can work on the front with the coupler and our skid plate here. So I'm gonna take my safety chains and a bolt. I'm gonna run a bolt through the very last links of each respective chain. So we'll have it like this. We'll feed it up through there and this will attach to the tongue of our trailer and then we'll follow it up with a washer and nut on the inside. So we'll get these lined up with the holes in the bottom of our tongue. And we'll put that washer on and that nut, and we can start tightening those down. It is kind of a tight fit to get that nut inside, but it's only about an inch and a half in there. So it's definitely doable, but it is kind of a tight fit. So you can see I got that loosely installed. You can get that tightened down all the way, but I wanna make sure that my chains aren't kind of bound up, so I'll kind of separate them a little bit so it's easier to hook up to our vehicle. Now we can get our coupler in place. We need to make sure that we're installing the handle at the same time. We're gonna grab our bolts, and those are gonna pass through both of those. go. I'm just going to get a nut on there to hold this in place while I install the other one. Now these are a little bit larger than what we've been working with. So these are going to be tightened down with a 19 millimeter or a three quarter inch wrench and socket. That one held in place. Now when you're tightening these down, you don't want to be over tight with it because you don't want to crush the coupler or the tongue. Um, that is not ideal. If we get too tight on this, we're not going to be able to use the locking mechanism of our coupler. But obviously we want it tight because this is where it connects to our vehicle on the ball mount. Get that nice and snug. Now we can put the support tubes in place for our load assembly bars. And I already have the driver's side done. What we're gonna take is this piece right here, our support tube, and we're going to pass a U-bolt through it. Just like that. So we're gonna come from the outside and just like that. So I'm gonna bring it back as far as it'll go. And then we're going to put these nuts on the inside there. And we're just going to tighten those down evenly. So we'll just go back and forth with a socket or a wrench. Now I just have a deep well socket for this one. It's a little bit easier to use in my opinion, but a wrench will also work for you. I prefer the ratcheting kind. So I'm just gonna tighten these down until I get a nice, Tight fit. Okay, that one's in place. Now we can follow that same process for the front one. It's a little tricky though, so let's just show you how we got that one put in place too. So we're gonna go just behind our second cross beam from the front, and it's a tight fit because this is where that subframe for our tongue kind of angles in. So it's a really tight fit. That's where that socket isn't going to work out well. I'm going to just use a wrench. And even though I have that ratcheting wrench, there's not enough room to use on the bottom one. So just gonna have to do it in little tiny quarter turns until we get it put in place. But I'll get this on here, get it fed through the same way. Get it up against that cross member. And if you take a closer look, you can see how I kicked my nuts all around this trailer. So you can see here where this beam right here comes into play. That's where I can't even get a socket, can't even get my ratcheting wrench on there. So we're just gonna 
Just go through and slowly get that tightened down with our wrench. Try to get that as tight as we can. And it's definitely doable. I did it on the other side. It's just a little bit slower. And this is where Malone wants you to install this. So, you know, I, my first instinct was to bring it to the front so I'd have more space, but we're gonna keep it right where they want it just so we have that proper load capacity that we're looking for in this trailer. We need to install our bracket that holds the load bars to our support arms. So I'm gonna take one of these bolts right here and I'm going to pass it through. And get it secured with a lock nut on the other side. And then before I move on, I can put one of my larger end caps in place right there. And if you want, you can take like a hammer and just kind of get it in place. But you can also get with your hand there. Then we'll take another bolt and run it through here and get that loosely installed. Now I'm only doing these hand tight because we still need to slide our load bars through. I've already done the other side. So let's just get our load bar put in place before we tighten all these down. So we can just slide this through. And it's personal preference, but we all like to have these holes right here facing the inside. And that's essentially where some tie down anchors are going to go. So I like to have those all kind of matching up. You can have them on the outside if you want, but I'm just gonna have them matching up to the rear bar that I installed already. So we'll just get this ran through here. And we just need to make sure that we're getting this centered up. And then once we get it centered, we can begin tightening down these eight bolts. Then when we get this centered up, we can begin tightening down these bolts. We're just gonna use that same set, that 9 16 or 14 millimeter we've been using throughout most of this. Then we can just repeat this same process for the other side. So this next step should be extremely simple, but for me, it was the most annoying part because I already did the rear bar and it's just a hook, it's tie down anchor, but the way that they put this in place, I don't like it. So we'll run our bolt through it and through this. Now, on most of the rest of the connections we have on this trailer, the bolt passes all the way through whatever we're connecting it to. Well, there's nothing to pass through there. So we have to have this nut on the inside of this. So it creates a nice clean look, but it's extremely difficult in my opinion to get this in there. So you can't really get your finger in there far enough to get that put in place. So you can put it on a wrench if possible. I'll just use a 14 millimeter and you can either put it on either end and just kind of get it put in there enough to where you can get it started. But the thing is, you can't pull that wrench off all the way. Once it's in there and you start tightening it down, that bolt gets too far to where you can't get your wrench out. So they suggest using a screwdriver, which seems a little silly to me. Um, you can do it, it's just going to take you a decent amount of time. Now I found using a little bit thicker device like this pry bar here worked a little bit better. And it's up to you on how tight you want that to sit there. If you want it to just be extremely forced up there and all you can do is raise and lower this, that's fine. We left one like that on the back and then we left one where we could rotate it. One, because we like the flexibility, but two, just because it takes so long to get that tightened down. It is worth, in my opinion, leaving it a little bit loose. Now, that being said, you're probably losing some ability or some weight capacity on what you can tie down there. So just keep that in mind. This will take a little bit of effort, but it is doable. So we're just going to be patient and try to get this installed without getting too irritated. Get it started as best as possible. We don't wanna to go too far because we still need to get our wrench out. I definitely made that mistake the first time. It's kind of like when we're putting those support arms towards the front on the same piece. 
and we were real tight with that U-bolt. This is just another one of those things where awesome trailer, just a couple pieces of the insulation just are a little tight and don't match up with the ease of installation compared to the rest of it. So just be patient, get it lined up, and you should be good. So what I ended up using was a 14 millimeter wrench that wasn't ratcheting. The ratcheting ones are just a little bit wider, but I still had that issue where I couldn't get this tightened down all the way and get the tool out of there. And I, I don't think the screwdriver trick that they have in the directions is a good one. Um, you can get it a little bit, but you're getting a bolt at a weird angle. So you can see I've got it pretty tight. I can still move it around a little bit, but it's not wiggling around either. So I feel pretty comfortable with that. Next thing we need to do is put our end cap in place. So we can just put those on. Now this one's a little bit smaller than the larger one we put in the base. We'll just kind of get it centered up. And then you can use like the butt of a screwdriver if you want, but you can just push it in as well. So then we would just repeat that same process for the other side and we have our load bars ready. The next thing we need to do is put our jack stand in place. So I've got my bolts. I'm gonna pass them through the top here. And then I'm going to get that plate on the other side. And I'm going to put a split lock washer and a nut on the other side. Now when it comes to putting the bottom bolt in, we want this to be in the hole that's closest to the tongue of the trailer. There's several different holes and that's to work with different types of trailers. This jack can work with several different size tongues. Get that put in place and then get this hand tight for now so it can hold itself in place to get the rest of our hardware installed. And I noticed when I had this bracket put on, I had it upside down, so make sure that you have those matching. You won't be able to get this installed properly without it having it match up to the other side. But the three holes on the bottom is the way that we want that bracket to be. So it matches up with the opposite side of our jack. Now to get these tightened down, we're going to use a little bit different size socket wrench that we've been using throughout this entire installation. So we're going to switch to 17 millimeter on both. And you're going to want a, I'm using a little bit deeper well socket to get over those bolts. And the way we know that we want this, or get this tightened down all the way, because we don't want to crush this tongue. Those split lock washers, as they flatten out and get even, that's a really good rule of knowing that we have this tightened down all the way. So let's just evenly go back and forth between the four of them and get this tightened down all the way. All right, as soon as we get that last one done, we've got this fully tightened down. We can take this bolt out of place down here and we can begin placing our wheel onto our jack. So we can grab our wheel, run our bolt through the outside frame and the wheel, put that nut on there. And then to get this tightened down, we need a three quarter inch or a 19 millimeter wrench and socket. We can just start tightening this down. And then, you know, you don't need to have this real tight. I definitely want some threads peeking out the other side of that nut there, but you can see we still have the ability to roll that, but that's not coming loose. So. So then we can rotate it, get it all held in place whichever way we want. And I'm not going to take this quite off the jack stands yet, but you can see that's working. So we'll just put a little bit there to help us out with everything. And the next step is to get our basket put in place. And John, the guy behind the camera, helped me get this back in place back here. We just simply set it down back behind the rear axle, place it. I like to get it as close to that axle as possible, as far as you can go. Then we'll take this U-shaped bolt where it has that little indention there, and we're just gonna get it at a slight angle around our frame, just like this. And I like to go closer towards the center of the basket. And then we'll take this plate right here, and we'll get it 
to line up with our bolts. It may take a little bit of maneuvering. I see that my leaf spring bracket is blocking me there, so I'm gonna take it off and just flip it this way. Just like that. Get it held in place for just a second. And just start putting those nuts in place. Then we'll come back with a 916 socket or a wrench, whatever you've got, but you're definitely gonna need something like a deep well with this to get that all the way in place. And it's kind of an awkward angle to tighten this down. So once again, we'll just have to be kind of patient with it. I thought I was gonna be able to do this whole trailer without power tools, but I just wanted something that was a little bit quicker. So I just got this impact and I'm just getting that tightened down. So it's tightened down enough. You know, I'm not really bending anything, but I definitely want it to be snug. So then we'll just repeat that same process for the other side. Now to secure the lid, we'll just run the strap. I have it just below where the lid attaches through one of those grids. And then I'm just gonna run it all the way up top. And then we'll just do the same thing over here. And I'll just run it through that edge. You know, there's not a lot of slack here, but it's just enough to keep our lid secured. I do like that that strap comes with that piece underneath it to protect the finish. You know, it's a nice kind of rubber coat on there. So we don't have that metal buckle there rubbing up against it. So we'll just take out that slack. There's not even enough really to tie off there. Now to prep our box, we're gonna put our retaining handles in place, but first we need to put the brace for that. So I'm gonna take one of these bolts run it through this bracket and then run it through this small hole down here below our latch. And then we're gonna follow that up with a large washer and then a large nut. Get that loosely installed. So to tighten this down, we're just gonna use a 13 millimeter wrench and socket. Then we can pass our bolt through here. This one's gonna have a pretty long shoulder there, so that's the way to tell which one goes in there. And then we can tighten that down with the same wrench and socket we were just using. And then once we get that side tightened down all the way, we're gonna do that same process on the opposite side. We don't need this to be real tight, but I like for that metal clamp to just barely touch the rubber there. You can see, still usable, but it's not moving around a whole bunch. So we'll go do that other side real quick and then we can move on to our drain plug. So just put that right down in the drain hole that's down in the bottom corner of this. Get that lined up. And then we'll use the self-tapping screws that are included to get that fastened in. So the next thing we need to do is pass our bolt through our wheel. And then we're gonna take two small washers. And then we're going to pass that through the hole on the opposite side of where we put that drain plug. Then on the inside, we'll put a large washer. Then I'll follow it up with a nut. Get this tightened down with 13 millimeter socket and a wrench. We want it to be pretty snug. We don't want that kind of bouncing all around, but we don't want it so tight that, you know, the wheel doesn't roll. You know, the washers and those bearings are gonna help out with that, but we still want it to be somewhat, you know, that's a little too tight. So we'll loosen that up just a little bit because we want that to spin a little bit. It's a little bit better. There we go, that's much better. 
So then we can repeat that same process for the opposite side. Once we get those wheels on, we can put the lid in place, put that latch down and take one of our carabiners on this side, secure it, and then do that same process on the other side. The next step is to insert our rollers. And that's where we have these two cross members right here. Remember, we face those into one another. And we're gonna do this on the passenger side. And you can press these in. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to insert it into that hole right there, press it in, get it to line up there. And then we'll do that same process here. There you go, now we have those in place. The next step is to install our handle cleats. In the directions, they say to measure between the two center cross members here. And then you'll take that measurement down and you'll line up the bottom of this with the bottom of the top beam right here. Now ours were already pre-drilled, but since they had those in the directions, I just wanna kinda give you guys a quick run over of how you would do that. So measure the center, bring it down, and then you'll use this, the holes in the handle cleats, to mark your spot. And then you can pre-drill with a 5 30 seconds bit. And then you can just run the self-tapping screws that are included. So it was really convenient that it came pre-drilled for us. I don't know if that's just a uh, weird coincidence or not, but it is very convenient today. So I'm going to get that lined up, get my self-tapper started in there. And then we can just get that second one put in place. And then we'll just repeat that same process for the opposite side. Next thing we need to do is actually go back and remove these top bolts from those center channels on both sides, just the top one. So we're just gonna go back and use that 14 millimeter that we were using earlier. And we can just get those completely removed. Next thing, we'll grab our channel guides and we're going to install those in the oval holes right next to where we just removed those bolts. So right here and right here and then on the opposite side. So we'll get that loosely set in place. We'll take that bolt and washer and come up from the bottom side and get this loosely threaded on. And we're gonna leave these loose for now. And we'll come back and tighten those up later. Next, on those channels that are loose, on the holes closest to the passenger side, we're gonna take these longer bolts, we're gonna drop them down through, just like this. And what these are doing, these are going to be the stop or the break of our box as we're sliding it out so it doesn't go too far. So we'll just take a lock nut on the bottom side of that and get that installed and get those tightened down. Next, we can grab the box can get this loosely set in place. And this is why we have those rails loose so we can kind of get it back there. But we gotta remember we have those stops there as well. So we gotta get around those. And get that put in place. And now we can go back and tighten up those bolts that are loose. And what we wanna do is we wanna bring those in so they're not pressing out like that. We wanna have them in that way we can easily slide this back and forth. And you can see that's where those stops come into play. All right, so let's get those tightened down real quick. So as we tighten these down with a 14 millimeter socket and wrench, just kind of want to apply some pressure in. And you'll remember those bolts we took out right here, those are not going back in. So I would hold on to those, store those in the garage somewhere, just so you have some extra hardware of the same size. If for some reason you need it, it's good to have that instead of having to run to the hardware store and trying to get it all matched up. So let's get these all tightened down. So now that we have those rails in place, you can see and get that sliding back and forth. Now we just need to latch this down. Just pull down on that. And for transport, you need to have both those secured. So now we have our box installed. Now the last thing we need to do 
is get our spare tire put in place. So I've got my spare tire sitting up here on the front. Then we're gonna take our U-bolt and we're gonna fit it from underneath. Get that lined up. And we can take one of our two pieces here. And one side's a little oval to allow a lock to go through and the other one is threaded. So we'll take that threaded one and we'll just get that started on here. There we go. Let's go down a little bit. So we want that U-bolt flush up against our frame underneath. So we'll get that till it's making contact with the rim or the wheel. You can see that holds itself in place and we can get this other one started. So we'll just get that tight and get those facing one another. And if you've got a lock, you should definitely put something on there. I don't think that those are gonna come undone, but it's still a good idea to keep that secure just so somebody doesn't walk away with it. You can see now we have that in place. For me, the last thing to do other than, you know, putting your proper legal stuff on your trailer is I'll push this little excess through. Probably not a bad idea to tape up these accessory wires that we're not using here today. Now the next step is getting our saddle style kayak carriers put in place. I have seven of the eight put in place. I spun this around to make it a little bit easier to get them all put in place. And what we do here is I have part of it installed already. So I'm taking the longer bolts and we're dropping them down through there. And then I have one of these plates in place. I have a little wing nut there and we're just gonna get that to line up. So I like that they have these little grooves to make it sit on the bars a little bit easier. And then we're just going to tighten these down. Now the ones in the back are the ones with the pads and those just slide right over the cradle. And then they have a hook and loop strap that runs right underneath there. So really easy to get those put in place. So I'm just gonna get these tightened down and then make sure that I have them all lined up before I would load up my kayaks. So we're gonna take one of these plates back here and I'm gonna get this centered up and it's easy to spot based on these holes back here. So I have four bolts running through down here. We're gonna go around the frame there and then I'm gonna match it up with the same style bracket on the back side of our frame. We'll get those all lined up with one another I'm just gonna get a couple started for now with the nuts on the back side there. So as we get those just loosely installed, we can get the others to line up. And then we have a few more we're going to install on top, but I just like to get these bottom ones done first. And as we're assembling this, we're gonna leave everything loose until we get everything in place on the second tier so we can get things lined up properly. That way we're not fighting each other on it. I'm gonna do three here in the center, these three, and then those top two. We'll just do the same thing that we did on those bottom four. And then we're gonna do that same process right here at the front of the trailer with our second cross member. Now I left this center one out you can put it in place just for a second to kind of line things up, but then we're going to take this piece and line it up with that hole and get everything to push through. Get that to push through, and then we'll put the nut on the back side. And then we'll just, like I said, leave this loosely installed so we can get everything else lined up. And then we can just repeat the same process for the front. So the next thing we need to do is get our plates loosely installed on that top piece. So what I'm going to do is get this ran through here. And I'm gonna run another bolt through this one right here. And we can just get this plate to match up on the opposite side. and start running those nuts in place. 
Now for the opposite end, we're gonna grab these pieces and we want these brackets to sit like this. So we want one hole exposed. So we'll drop this down through there just to kind of get it prepped. We'll put it on that middle one as well. Get a nut on the back side. So now it's a good idea to grab a friend. I had Chris come in and he's putting it on the front beam there. So we're just going to slide this bolt through right there, put a nut on the other side, and we're just keeping these loose as well. Next thing we need to do is install these brackets. So we're just gonna get those three bolts put in place. We're gonna get them all lined up with one another. and start putting a nut on the back side. Now we can put this bar in place. I'm just gonna slide it through there. And we're going to need to move our spare tire to a different location. We'll just have to move it forward or back compared to wherever you put it in place. Because you can see where this is supposed to go down, our spare tire is interfering. So I'm gonna move it back and I'm gonna position my spare tire about right here. Now to get this in down here attached to the rest of our trailer, it's just gonna go like this. So we're gonna use two bolts that go through here into that, but we need to take this off and install that with our plate. So we're gonna remove those real quick. Now that I've got that plate swapped around and installed back into the tongue there, we can run these bolts through. There we go. Then once we get these nuts installed, we can start tightening everything down all the way and then get our crossbars put in place. So now that we have everything loosely installed, we can go back and tighten everything all the way down. I'm just gonna go from the beginning and work my way through how we got these put in place. So we'll just start at the bottom and just kind of work our way up to the top. Now, once we get everything tightened down and we pick the spot where we want this back crossbar, I kind of like mine being right here. Um, we need to get our hooks installed like we did down low. So it's gonna be the same step. If you've got a really small 14 millimeter wrench to get in there and kind of help it out, that screwdriver technique, I just, I don't know. It's okay, but I just wasn't having any luck for it. So I'd rather have mine just a little bit loose. Um, obviously not that loose, but once we get all those put in place and we can put all of our respective end caps on there, and just get everything tightened down properly. And we did it, we got through this trailer. You know, it took some time. I would definitely set aside a good chunk of your weekend to do this. It's a really good idea to have some friends come over and help you out. They're gonna be using it anyway, so you might as well have them help you get it and put it in place. Um, you know, had some hiccups here and there, just took a little bit of time. But overall, not that bad of an assembly when you think about we're only doing it once and then we get a really good kayak trailer. Um, so on our meeting, we have myself, Wilson, uh, Haley, Alex, Har Alex Harness, Brian, Alex Carlson, Mark, and Adam, as well as Lindsay. Uh, everyone. So, so we got a big crowd. Cool. Full house. Yes. Yeah. All right, guys. Magic. Yeah. So this is uh, an opportunity for us to take a look at the, uh, the Megasport two-tier trailer um, that uses the Saddle Up Pro Kayak Cradles. Um, Zach, you just want to kind of go over it and uh, let us know your thoughts uh, start to finish. Yeah, so we are just about done with installing this. Um, we had a little bit of a hang up with uh, mislocating a part or trying to find it um, to get our last crossbar in place. Um, when it comes to getting this together, it is definitely going to take you a decent amount of time. I was able to do it with just basic hand tools. Um, when it, you know, I used an impact, which just was for speed. Um, I didn't necessarily need it, but it definitely made a few things go a little bit faster. Um, when it comes to the directions, they're just, they're, everything's there on how to do it. It's just not as clear. Some of the photos, they rely on the photos, in my opinion, to, uh, get things put in place. As for the actual frame of the trailer, the bottom cross beams down here, there's a lot of different holes to kind of fit different configurations that Malone's trailers come in. And with this specific setup, 
it just left a little bit of me trying to figure out exactly where this went. It wasn't too difficult to get that put in place because I helped put these trailers together. Um, so I think that the directions leave a little bit to be desired, but you can definitely work your way through it. Um, hand, or hand tools, a huge plus. I mean, getting the tires, the axle, all that stuff on is pretty simple, actually. Electrical is something that people are usually intimidated by, including myself. I know basic connectors, but this is just a kind of bullet style plug in. You just put them together and then your electrical is working. I don't have a tester here right now to show you that they work, but it just gives you that basic turn, running lights, and brake lights, which is what you need. Um, insulation overall. Took us some time shooting the video. I think it would definitely take a good portion of your day if you're doing this with a friend. Uh, so intimidating, but definitely doable by most people if they had any experience with just using wrenches and sockets. Um, I don't know, is there anything that you guys would find intimidating about putting together a trailer? Um, probably the amount of parts that comes with it. I would say once you kind of lay it all out, the, you know, looking at it all laid out on the floor, I'm sure it's a little intimidating before you get started. Um, would you suggest possibly having a friend over to do it? Or could you see this as like a weekend project for a single person? I think it's a weekend project. Just, you know, I, it depends on their capabilities. Um, like I said, I've done a few of these and put together a decent amount of stuff here. So, um, I was able to just kind of work my way through it. But you definitely, definitely want to set aside a good, good day. Uh, when it came to the parts, it all showed up in a bunch of different boxes. And if you just kind of organize them, we had a big enough space that we could kind of get things laid out. And they come with, you know, the parts, you know, the bolts and nuts and washers. All that stuff comes in the box with the physical hardware that it will install to you. So keeping that stuff together. For the most part, they're all the same size, the bolts and nuts. So if you did get messed up, you, you know, they're probably going to work. I think for about most of the base of the trailer, I used the same socket wrench all the way through, which was, that's pretty big. Um, that was the other thing with the socket sizes, pretty common, um, you know, 13, 14 millimeter sockets, 916. That's stuff that comes in most people's kits if they have that at home, so you don't need anything. You know, probably don't have to go get extra stuff too, which is another downside of putting together something like this. Um, another big thing with this when it comes to this trailer is you do need to have the legal, you know, qualifications to pull this trailer when it comes to having the license plate on it and all the, you know, paperwork for it. It comes with that. You'll have to go to, you know, your respective uh, license bureau, but when it comes to all that other work you have to help it works there for you. Um, I will say as you move up it gets easier to install uh, just because things are lighter and you don't have to flip the trailer over. Oh, that was probably the biggest thing was flipping the trailer. That's where you definitely need a friend. So you start with the trailer upside down and get all of the like release spring in the tire and the axle put in place and then you have to flip it over. So Definitely wasn't doable by myself. Um, but the quality of the trailer is awesome. I mean, we've used Malone trailers around here. Some of the guys have taken them down to Florida from up here, and they, I mean, they can be at highway speeds, and they've taken multiple kayaks out. They are, there's no questioning the quality of it. Um, they use a lot of their components to it, and being able to just easily assemble it, say easily, using that loosely, but I think that it's a really good route to go if you had the need to carry your kayaks like this consistently. You guys have any questions about things? I mean, this is a lot different than a lot of them. There's you know, extra parts. So we have the second tier, uh, the first capacity. There's a little bit more than the basic micro sports that probably most of you guys have taken a look at. Does Malone have recommended torque specs? Do you actually need a torque wrench or is just a straight up hand wrench good enough? That's a really good question because I did one thing that needs to be torqued properly and I did use a torque wrench. So I, I threw out all of that and during the installation or the assembly video, 
I spoke to hand, basic hand tools. I did grab a torque wrench uh, just to get the wheels and tires torqued mm -hmm. properly, which was, I mean, that it wasn't much. So you could easily do that with hand tools, but to get the proper, you know, the actual setting, you probably need to pick up. You don't need a digital one like we used in the video. You can buy, you know, one that's not as expensive um, that would just click in place for you. Uh, but yeah, so we did have to torque those down to the proper foot pounds, but the rest of it is just, just as tight as you can get it. So sometimes there were split lock washers, uh, not very often. So that's, you know, that's one that you kind of know when you're getting the proper tightness on it. Um, but it was just as tight as I could get them, really. I feel confident that as tight as I can get it and everything's going to be fine. We've pulled these trailers around with the same uh, port set and on that that we're just doing by ourselves and we've not had any issues with them. But it is a good question because you're pulling a trailer down the road and you want everything to be tight. So as tight as I can get it, may not be as tight as some and tighter than others. So. That is one thing that I guess is a little weird if they don't mention anything throughout the perennial portion anyway. Cool. Thanks, Zach. No problem. I did remember another part to that. So there was so much to getting this together. Uh, a couple times with more important things, there's a plate, and the way that they say it's tight enough is when you start to see a slight bend in the plate. You don't want to go any more than that, but once you start seeing it kind of bend, over you know the pressure point that's when you have it tight enough you mentioned that we've or known people who've used this for the highway um are the tires rated for highway speeds uh yeah i believe so those are uh you know those are smaller trailer tires but there there's probably there probably is a weight capacity to it um, i just had not looked up those specifications yet um these are a little bit heavier duty, if I can remember correctly, compared to the Micro Sport. They're just a thicker tire. Um, those are those other ones I feel like are a little bit kind of slimmer to some of the other sport trailers that we offer um, from other brands. But these seem to be more in line with a small utility trailer. So when you put it all together, you basically just did the frame first, upside down, put everything on, went to the suspension. I'm guessing those are pre-greased hubs, so you didn't have to worry about anything in there. Nice. I didn't mess with anything there. They do have a little cap that I haven't taken off though. That's a good point to see if they're easy lube or not. Um, okay. that, is, that is definitely something worth investigating though, for sure. But yeah, they're pre -greased. The wiring just runs straight through, I'm assuming. It's all just plug and play and runs through the frame. Yeah, so it's gonna be a lot like uh, trailer would be so wiring runs through the tub and then it wise off and then just runs through the channels on the back side i don't know if you guys can see it very well but you can kind of see it hanging out back here mm -hmm. and they come with some clips that are pretty good but i zip tied it just to show that you can do zip ties as well um got plenty of length to get this hooked up and then it just, I'm trying to think if there's a good spot to show you guys how easy it is to connect. Because I kind of took some of the slack out to show it, but it, it's really simple. It's just yeah. plugs it right in. So the guys on the side, those aren't lights, those are just reflectors? Uh, no, these, uh, these are the side marker lights for sure. Oh, they are lights too. Uh, yep. Cool. So, um, Driver's side tail light offers a license plate light as well, which is nice. And I think they're incandescent. Nope, LED. Nice. Which is nice. Uh, comes with a full spare tire. The, the jack left a little bit to be desired. I mean, it's nice enough, but it just, it's just kind of basic, but it's easy to maneuver. Mm -hmm. I think that it's wide enough that most people can kind of get it lined up with their vehicle. Now pushing this back around in the shop might be a decent amount of effort, but you just need to kind of line it up to 
get a tighter spot once you're on the from your vehicle. Um, definitely doable for most people. What else is different about this compared to some of the others? For the most part, it's just beefier compared to the micro sport trailer. So it's got a higher capacity. Um, I don't remember the exact specifications for these load bars, but when I did three tier, I remember thinking that even fishing, like the heavier fishing kayaks could fit on it. Now that one didn't come with the saddle style kayak carrier. So I remember having several, you could put two or three kayaks just on one side, two or three over there. But with this, uh, I don't think that you have any issues with really any kayak that's on the market getting this loaded up. And then up top, um, it doesn't come with a kayak carrier for up there, but you can put, you know, some pads up there. You want to carry something like a stand-up paddleboard. Um, this is where the other crossbar would go, but where we misplaced those parts, like I said earlier. Kind of think everything's pre-drilled. The directions did state that this needed to be drilled out, but it was already done for us. So no drilling, which is huge. And what that is, is that just holds this in place. So that's just a little cleat holder. And when we do both those sides, this little storage box can slide out halfway to make it easier to access stuff, which is really nice. It doesn't slide out all the way, so get stuff unloaded and loaded when you have your kayak in place will be an issue, but it keeps stuff slightly secure, so it's kind of hard to do from the middle. Um, I did note that in the instructions, the uh, this is not completely waterproof, so I wouldn't put anything extremely valuable in there. So there aren't any seals or anything? Yeah. There is a tiny seal around the lid, but they, they made it a point to let you know that this isn't waterproof. I think you would do a good job, you know, for most things. I wouldn't put any electronics or anything back here, but it does come with a drain plug on the other side. So I guess they're kind of anticipating you getting some water in there. I would assume that's more of like get your PFDs in there or you know, you can get used while you were fishing your dry bags. If it had any water on it. Yeah, I would think I would be likely to put wet stuff in there. Yeah, and then, so for me, and that's also what you could use this basket for too. Yeah. I think it's just up to each individual. But it's a nice touch having it on there. What does, that box, does that box slide on rollers or does it just slide on the, the framework? It does. Yeah, so there's two little rollers down on the bottom that you can't see, but they, they sit basically down in this subframe. Mm -hmm. So down here, there's two rollers okay. and they run all the way to the next cross member. And then the box actually has, they kind of look like roller blade wheels. Mm -hmm. They run in this channel on these top members right here. So I don't know if you can see. I uh, showed if them. You can get them down there. Okay. Yep. So yeah, it's got a couple of different things going on with it. And, and that only slides out to the passenger side there. It doesn't slide out on the driver's side. That's correct. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, there's, a, there's a stop there. So some, that was something I did think was kind of odd was during the installation of it, and I get it because the bottom of this trailer goes to lots of different trailers, but I had these bolts and nuts running down to this cross member into the frame. And then you remove them, you know, 90% through the video or through the installation, excuse me. And you don't put anything in place. So these two cross members are only supported down at the bottom. So they, you take them out so your box doesn't scratch up against them. So it can have full, you can see where it would make contact. It's just kind of odd that there's nothing to support this top. I mean, it, 
just kind of weird because you can see there's some flex there. I don't know how important that is, but it is the frame of the trailer. So, And the stop point is actually going to be right there. Yeah, so the those wheels catch up right there. So you can't pull the box all the way out. Also, I don't know if I introduced John's behind the camera today. John's chilly. Sorry for that late introduction. How much protection does the wiring have? Is there a is it, is it pretty thick jacketed to make sure that it's not damaged? Yes, um, not as thick as like really kind of heavy duty stuff that we we ran you know on other setups, but it, it is pretty decent quality. Um, it isn't as thin as just like an individual you know twelve volt wire, but it's got I don't know kind of has a little bit thicker than what you get out of like a coax cable maybe. Because it does, you know, there are spots where it could potentially rub up against the threads of that bolt when you're passing through those channels. They created a big enough hole where it shouldn't have too much um, wear on that. But it is, it is definitely something that I kind of talked about throughout the assembly. Okay. It is, I, I kind of wish they would put a grommet or something in the kit to kind of right. add through all of those. Because the hole's there. Uh, It'd just be a tiny little touch that they could add in to, to keep that from happening. Yeah, that'd be nice. So or possibly using uh, wire loom around some of those areas where it might roll up against the bolt threads and things like that. Yeah, wire loom, definitely not a bad idea to throw that in too. The top crossbars, they don't have anything that are supposed to be attached to them. They're just there for you to decide how to use them. So they, they don't come with like a kayak carrier in this kit. They right. do come with these hooks. Like I was kind of talking about earlier, where was, this is maybe a good example, but you can put them there. So you have like tie down points. So I think if you, you know, you added in a pad, you could put you know, a canoe, I could see a canoe going up here, another kayak um, or stand-up paddleboard if you wanted, and you could use these as tie-down points. We just didn't finish the installation because we were missing parts. Mm -hmm. But this one, um, you can kind of move up and down to fit your needs, whatever you're looking for, but the front one is fixed. How many uh, how many tie down points are available on the bottom crossbars? Uh, four, so one on each corner. So the whole bottom has four. Okay. Per bar. Which I I don't know. I guess running. You know, if I had one kayak here, I would probably want to have another one just right on the other side, but I guess you could probably run them back and forth. Or you could just kind of do how we do with, uh, you know, if we're putting this on a roof, you can just run your strap underneath the crossbar and then loop it back over the kayak to this side on the point. Right. How does the basket open? Does it, does the lid come off or does it just... Yeah. It completely comes off, so it's all just in place with this strap. Okay. So it has some good weight to it as well. Okay. It's a sturdy wire. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And it it's just it's right between the frame and it has two U-bolts that hold it to the frame. Cool. I think adding this, these storage solutions to this trailer is really nice. Because then you don't have to carry out, you know, all that extra stuff if you're you know, pulling an SUV or just gives you some extra space in the vehicle. Mm -hmm. 
what uh, what do you think about possibly taking this trailer and trying to store it, you know, up against the wall um, if you have limited space? Is a you know maybe somebody that doesn't have a big uh, parking spot to put it in? Do you think you would be able to lean this up against the wall if uh, like over the winter time if you're not going to be using it, or oh, is this something you're going to need space for? Yeah. No, I don't think that would be such a challenge to get that. Um, it's it's pretty heavy. Yeah, I think the product weight I said it was over three hundred pounds. Yeah, it. Uh, I think you'd probably create a lot of too much weight on these bars here, and or this. Um, yeah, it'd just be too much pressure on it. I, I think most people wouldn't be able to get it lifted up though. It'd be it'd be quite the challenge. This micro sports, I could maybe see somebody doing that with a micro sport, um, maybe, but not this guy. Yeah. What do you think about backing this trailer up? Do you think a customer would have very many, very, a very hard time trying to back it up? I know it's about 14 foot long, um, but as far as being able to back it up in a straight line to use it somewhere, do you think you'd? If you've backed a trailer before, you know how to do it, but because this one's only 14 foot, would you have issues? So, I am not good at backing up trailers. I think I would struggle with this one a little bit, just because it is a shorter trailer. So, the concept I've always been told is the shorter the trailer, the, you know, the tinier move you make, the larger the trailer moves. Um, so, I think that if you're not experienced with backing up trailers, probably going to be an issue. Um, I guess you do get that, you know, that longer tongue that maybe helps out a little bit with it, so you're getting the, the axle back a little bit further, but I don't know. I think if you got to where you really needed to get to a tight fit, I would maybe consider just unhooking, but that's just me as someone who's not good at backing up trailers. Right. So unhook it and then grab it by the tongue and move it where you need it then, make it easier. Yeah, I think so. I mean, some of the other guys around the shop, though, they would just put it right into this garage bay with no problem. Me, I, you guys would be laughing at me the whole time. <laughs> yeah, it seems like uh, it's actually pretty heavy duty. I'm kind of excited to, to see it yeah. in action um, with full demo video and everything. I know it's got a pretty good load capacity of 1,000 pounds, so I think the options are pretty endless with this. Yeah. Yeah, I wish we had some heavier kayaks. You know, we only have some recreational ones, so we don't have any fishing to really put more weight on it. Uh, but it's still, it's, it's going to do the job for most people, that's for sure. You guys have anything else? Anything else you're wondering about? I think I've got everything that I needed. Uh, I don't know about anybody else. Feel free to uh, ask anything you have questions about or anything that you see. All right, everybody. We'll appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thank you for taking the time to show us. Uh, I know there's a lot of moving parts and it's kind of yeah. tedious, but we really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thank you. But overall, I think this is a really awesome setup. Of all of Malone's trailer configurations, this is one of my favorites. I like having the second tier. I like having all the storage boxes down below. And just being able to carry some heavier boats is a really nice plus for me. Frees up all that space on top of the roof of the vehicle if we wanted to use that. And just the construction, everything about it is really nice. And I like that everything I need for my trailer comes with this kit. So that's going to do it for our look at the Malone Megasport 2-Tier with Saddle Up Pro Kayak Carriers.